The city of Mission Viejo is proud for the 10th consecutive year to host the Orange County Triathlon. Today we have an incredible show with a stellar lineup of guests that include the top male finishers, three Olympians and Julie Swell Ertel, McKeeley Jones and Joanna Zeigler, plus a recently engaged power couple that finished at the top of their game. Add in the director of the event along with a special guest competing for Parkinson's plus extended coverage of the race and an overall good time. That amounts to a big show. I'm Paul Higgins, this is Coach's Corner, and all the action starts right now. Hello everybody, I'm Paul Higgins and welcome to this edition of Coach's Corner. As you can tell, we do have a fantastic show from the city of Mission Viejo, the 10th annual Orange County Triathlon. It was a fantastic event. Today we captured that event and we're going to interview a whole host of people. We start off in high fashion though with the top two male finishers. To my right, returning champion, his second straight year in a row, a local boy from Elisa Viejo winning the event, Sasha Romanenko. And congratulations to him. And all the way from New Zealand, New Zealand I should say, Dylan McNeese just flew into California this week, comes out and finishes in the top two in this event. So congratulations to both of you guys. And here you are back again and uh, not a bad showing the second time. You finished first again. Yeah, it um, was a little bit faster than last year. I've lost some weight to go a bit faster. You know, there was no fog in the swim, so it was a, you know, a beautiful swim. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. You lose weight. Where do you lose weight? <laughs> I lost it all up here. Okay. So I'm keeping the, the important stuff down here, but I lost. Okay. Yeah. And that's hard to do. We could do a whole show on just how you're doing that, <laughs> yeah. you know? So congratulations on that. And Dylan, fantastic race for you. And I know that um, you just came in from New Zealand you're rehabbing a hip, and this was your first race. Did pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've just flown in this week, like you said, and got a month here in California training before I head to Europe. So I uh, haven't tested out the hip yet. Um, it's not a new one. It's just cleaned up a little bit. And uh, yeah, I just it was just lucky that this race was on, and it's just down the road from where I'm staying at the moment. So I uh, popped by and, and had a good race of Sasha there. How'd you like the course? Uh, it's awesome. Um, you know, I wasn't here last year, obviously, so I could actually see where I was going, which was nice. And then the bike course is, you know, really quite uh, challenging, always up and down. Um, and the same in the run. Beautiful, it's a beautiful, nice, fast, good, fun course. Did it attract you at all that this was part of a, an Olympic race at some point, right back in 1980, 84, I think it was 84, if I'm getting that correct? I, I didn't actually know that, so no. But the yeah. fact that the Olympic distance was uh, was good for the hip, you know, not, not, not going straight into um, a half distance or a full distance was nice. So right, the Olympic right. distance was definitely a, a bit of a pull for me, but no, I didn't know it was part of the Olympic movement yeah. back then. That's where they get that street called Olympiad right out here, so ah, that's kind of cool, huh? Sense, yeah. So. I know that, that this is something we talked about last year, and, and you're both professional triathletes, and you're thinking about maybe going to the 70.3 category. You know, that's on your mind. I've already started. You've already started that transition. transition. Tell me, how does a race like this help you transition to that? Um, it's, it's halfway in between, but when you race the 70.3 distance, nutrition comes into play because it's twice the distance, and. It's a whole other factor because if you get that wrong, then your body won't won't perform well. So it's it's a little more punchy here, but there it's kind of like you have to keep it under you know a certain certain pace. You don't want to blow up. So you talk about the performance. Tell me about what category, what event in this race do you like the best, and what are you best at? Probably, um, it's close between the swim and the bike, but it, it might be, the bike's getting up there. So, I've swam my whole life, so swimming's always been natural for me, but I like I like the bike the most. And that's part of maybe your weight gain, your legs getting stronger? Yeah, it's power to weight ratio. Yeah. So I lose, I started losing weight and I was putting out more power, so you're just gonna go, go faster. It yeah. doesn't help on the downhill as much, right. but uphill. Dylan, all this sounds very familiar. Tell me your approach to that. Um, both of you guys, different physiques, um, but uh, your approach to, to, to your body weight and how you go about that. Um, I don't really have an approach these days. I'm 31, I think Sasha's <laughs> only 21. Uh, I find you can get quite caught up in the whole weight issue. 
um, and I, f I find my body will just be what my body will be. So I sort of eat what I want. You know, I try and eat healthy and be good, but uh, I just eat what I want and what I need, and, and hopefully the training sort of takes care of the rest. And um, it seems to work. Leading into a big event, the weight sort of comes off, and then of course you put a little bit more back on. But um, yeah, my approach is just to not really have an approach, to be honest. So looking at that from an experienced racer, do you think that would be something you transition to, not concerned about that? Because you're still young and still, he's still young too, yeah. what we're talking about. But again, two different bodies. Yeah, I just figured that once I go to the 70.3 distance, it's a half a marathon run and every extra pound you're carrying, because I was just doing a lot of push-ups and pull-ups and I, I didn't need that muscle. So yeah. I had just, I literally just had to stop and just let the training do the rest. So it's just supposed to help the run. So well, I It's can, working for you. Would that right? Slowly, slowly. Yeah. Cause you were you were phenom out there today. It was it was good. It's I I was a little pushy because I started in the second wave, so I did push it a little too hard on the hills. And if you if you don't go smooth, you know you'll start to to cramp up because yeah. the run course is is decently hilly. Right, so. Dylan. What was your favorite part? You mentioned the the run course being hilly, but what was your favorite part about this course today? I guess for me, coming back, it was just to be out racing again and sure. uh, pushing the body a bit. Um, but the bike was cool, but I've ridden that road you know, quite a few times, but I'd never really done a run like that, I guess. It's, uh, it was hilly, it was you know, lots of road, lots of sort of trail and little sort of swinging under the bridge and over the bridge. And um, it was just an interesting run. Like it was, you know, six and whatever miles, but it, it went quite quickly, which was, uh, which was nice. So yeah, and I just love, love being back. Well, we love having you. You know, I hope you come back and do this race again. And congratulations to you. I know we're going to fit a bunch of people on the show, but winning the race for the second straight time, congratulations. Good luck to you in going to Europe and continuing your rehab. Started off in a great fashion today. Once again, Sasha wins this thing, and, and Dylan finishes right behind him. So uh, two great racers. When we come back, we'll have three Olympians right here on Coach's Corner. Why go anywhere else for your remodel project when you can find everything here at Decor and Tile? Our expert staff has years of experience which is passed on to you whether you are a homeowner, contractor, or designer. At Decor and Tile, we make your project easy with our beautiful and unique showroom filled with tile, stone, decorative glass, wood tile, granite, and quartz like Pentel, Caesar Stone, and USA Cambria. Find out why Decor and Tile is the most referred showroom in South Orange County. Come in, call, or visit us on the web today. My mom always said, give up your chair for a lady, and that's what I've done, as we have three special guests now on this edition of Coach's Corner. Three Olympians in two different sports, two of them competed at the same time against each other in 2000. To my right, Julie Swell Ertel, of course, USA water polo team and triathlete, and Makili Jones, and also Joanna Zeigler. Now, these two competed against each other. They're still friends, but they like to nudge each other. The importance of today's event, the Olympic Challenge. Each one of them took a specific category today, or specific discipline, and Julie started off in the water, swimming, when it was nice and foggy, kind of cool. And then, of course, Mikili took off on the bike, and Joanna finished strong on the run. So congratulations, and is this the first time that you've competed in a relay type event with these ladies? I'm pretty sure it has, right? It is. That was my first relay and Joanna's first relay, so it was uh, fun to try something different. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now today, when you started off in the swim, it was overcast. And I'm not, I don't know if you were here last year, but last year you couldn't even see the buoys. But how was the swim today? It was much clearer. You could see all six buoys. Um, the visibility was great. Uh, the course was well marked. Um, you know, the, the pace started off rather fast. And then the, there's about six guys that we were able to hold on and then the rest of the pack dropped off. So it was kind of a lonely swim after the first buoy. Yeah, and Michaela, you took off on the bike. Yes, I got, I got the raw deal because I, I was out there for the longest. I was gonna say, that's a tough bike too, right? Yeah, I mean, but it, I love that actually. It's uh, uphill for the first six miles and then you get a little speed and then you get some more uphill, but the last couple of miles is downhill. So I definitely had a lot of pressure from these two saying, you better giddy up out there. Yeah, and Joanna, you had the opportunity to finish up the race on the run. Did you have any advice 
when you guys were in the transition area at all? I said, look, if you don't give me the chip in the lead, then I'm just going to stand here and not run. <laughs> but I didn't get the chip in the lead, and I decided to run anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, the run course is great, very hilly, just like the bike. A uh, little bit of everything, get some pavement, some uh, wood chip, some off-road. Kind of like a little bit of cross country. Right. So it, was, it was a fun fun day for you my know, first real life. You guys, it's in, in, in a lot of respects, It's I'm kind of in awe being in your presence here on the show knowing all the awesome things that you've done and representing the United States of America and of course you represented Australia but to represent your country and to be on a world stage do you ever go back and like pinch yourself and go I did that it's it's very special and the, the further away it gets um, I start to recognize like what an incredible experience I was blessed to have um, but the reality is, I'm just like anybody else. Like I have to wake up in the morning, I have to train, I have good days, I have bad days. I put my pants on one leg at a time. And so I'm just like everyone else, I just had the exceptional opportunity to do something for my country. Okay, I believe you about this much. Okay, <laughs> Makili, help me out on this. I don't think you're just like everybody else. I think that you have something special. When did you realize that you had something special? Is it physical? being physically special or is it being mentally strong? What What is that really? Well, it's funny, when I was growing up, I, I never really thought I would be good enough to go to the Olympics. And you know, I got to do that in 2000. And then recently I got to do it in, in Rio, guiding a sight impaired athlete. And I still sometimes, if, when people say, you know, how special you are, that's when I think you, you sort of reflect yeah. and realize, you know, all these opportunities that you've got. But the reason why you've got these opportunities is because, yeah, you have this special gift. But, you know, it's nice having a special gift and then being able to use it and mentally being able to push through and continue to push through. That's what I love about these two gals. You know, we're still out here training and competing. I mean, I've been racing for nearly 30 years. Wow. And you're 35. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's amazing. Joanna, again, um, what are your thoughts about when I ask that question? I mean, you're not just like everybody else. You have something inside of you that has made you an Olympian and won so many events. So, I mean, Ironman champion. Are you kidding me? Well, I think what it comes down to is finding what you're good at, which we clearly found our niche, and then nurturing it with good hard work, consistency the mindset has to be there because the thing about getting to the highest level is that it's not a straight trajectory. All of us have had our ups and downs and part of being a champion is getting through those down points and not letting them define who you are or make you want to quit. You just sort of fight your way through it and then you get to the higher level the next time. And, and all of you, I know that you've done hundreds of panels before races, right? You've gone and talked to athletes. When you were going through the sport, was there a particular advice that was given to you, and maybe we can ask all of you um, real quickly, that, that really hung on? When you watched the panel and you go, I'm gonna take that athlete and I'm gonna run with what they say. For me, because it was my second sport after going to the Olympics for water polo, it was have fun. Have fun. And so if it ever was not fun, you know, the travel, the hard work, the training, the winning, the losing, if it became not fun, I would give myself a little break and then reflect. And if it still wasn't fun, then that was when I knew it was time to hang up my suit. But um, for the most part, I really enjoy, I, I love hard work, I love the travel. And so I continue to do it. Yeah. How about you? Funny, it was uh, my high school run coach, and we'd be out there running intervals, and he always used to say, well, you remember me when you're famous. You know, so running around on this track when you're a little kid and you got this guy, you know. And I think he really taught me to be humble. Yeah. And I think that's, triathlon is the most humbling sport oh, yeah. in the world. You know, it'll turn around and kick you in the butt. But yeah, and I think if you are down to earth and humble, you know, you have a good perspective on things, you know, during the tough times, during the good times. So That's a I definitely... really good point. Have fun, humble, and... Uh, I was on a panel one year at the Hawaii Ironman, and Lisa Bentley said we are, and she was another Ironman, very successful Ironman athlete, and she said we are all just one, in, we are all just one run away from an injury. <laughs> And I thought that that's so true. And it really, I kept that in mind that you can't go too hard, you can't push your limits because we're really on a tightrope all the time. And you wanna be in the best fitness that you can be in, 
but if you go too hard and you end up injured, your fitness doesn't matter. Right. And so I always think about that when I do my workouts. What are the long-term ramifications of going too hard today? And you know, I could sit here and interview you guys all day, right? So, but so many questions I could ask you. Um, motivation for you, is it, is it that desire? I've got about a minute left in the segment. Desire to keep pushing yourself. Um, is that really what it is? I feel like I have been given a God-given gift. Yeah. And if I, I told my kids this at dinner last night, if I don't use that gift, then I'm not honoring God with what he gave me. And so I want to go out there and push myself and challenge myself and just see, I might not be as fast as yesterday or two years ago, but I want to see what I can do. Yeah. Do you, do you anticipate doing many more events like this in McKeeley with, the, with uh, a challenge like this? Yeah. The nice thing is, it's a little different. Yeah. You know, when you've been racing for a long time, it's it's nice to do stuff like this. Yeah. Because, you know, you do the same races over and right. over again, but this sort of format changes it. Well, I know we could spend all day talking. Congratulations today and, and being out there and participating and bringing recognition to this event. I know that your presence is definitely um, well warranted and accepted. I know all these athletes would love to talk to you. So thanks again. Great seeing you and great seeing you again. The last time I saw you was at your home in San Diego County. Joanna, nice to meet you. All right, perfect edition of Coach's Corner. Three Olympians will be back with much more right after this. Mission Basilica School is a Catholic parochial school with single grade classrooms from pre-kindergarten through eighth grade. We have absolutely the best to offer in education. We don't just educate the child academically. They are nurtured spiritually. They are guided through their spiritual journey. They are loved, every being of them. A Blue Ribbon School for Academic Excellence, located on the beautiful grounds of Mission San Juan Capistrano, Mission Basilica School. Well, we're following a great group of girls with a power couple, yes, a power couple that was recently engaged as of late Monday. They just got engaged, so what do they do? They go out and race the Orange County Triathlon. How well do they do? Well, they do pretty well. She places first, and he places third overall in the event. Congratulations to both of you, Kylie Chevalier and Max Beesman. Congratulations on the race, congratulations on the engagement, and congratulations on having some fast kids one day. <laughs> Kyle, I had you sitting down, and you told me the story, and I said, well, we gotta have Max on. So, it happened Monday. How did it happen? Um, we went and did a 10K in the morning <laughs> to prepare for this, and I just did that in the morning, and then we went hiking, and where were we? Black Star Falls. Black Star Falls. And I was really, really tired, and yeah, he just, I mean, we had friends up top, so they took pictures. And Let the cat out of the bag right there, huh, Max? Well, so, I waited until wait the, the end top. of the hike. He landed at the top. <laughs> And I definitely kind of made her work a little in the beginning because we had a late start and I didn't want our friends to wait too long. Um, so yeah, she almost turned around on me at, at one point, but it He's worked like, out. He's like, how are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm really tired. He's like, okay. And then he just keeps going. So. Well, you know, that was a, a side story to why you're on, really. I mean, what a great story it is. But the story today is the race yeah. and you finishing first overall for the ladies. Um, and you said you do this part-time for fun. Yeah. A former water polo player, mm -hmm. driver, Mm -hmm. uh, you were actually tutored with uh, a coach by Julie Swell Ortel, mm -hmm. who was just on the show. Yeah. So you decided to take a couple years off and you got involved in this sport. Yeah. You're pretty good at it. Thanks. How come? I mean, I have a good coach. You have a good so, coach. <laughs> um, Don't be that modest part. now. Don't be modest. I don't know. I mean, the swim was easy and the rest of it's just been, the run's always been a really hard thing. So there's been a put a lot of time into it, I think. Yeah. Um, but it's just been like a, a slow build. So right. the bike has just gotten stronger and stronger and the run just recently has started to feel mm, good. Yeah. <laughs> and, you're, and you're 28, yeah. so actually that's prime time, right? For Max, for a triathlete. Yeah. Um, you're looking at, uh, Joanna Zeigler just told me she was 38 when she won the Ironman in Kona. So this by no stretch is, is a sport that you're done by your 30. Max, could you ever see her doing this professionally? We've talked about it. Uh, I don't think she wants to. I think she could, um, but racing at that level is, is very different. Um, and it just takes a lot more commitment. 
it does also kind of take some of the fun out of it because it's it's a little more results based and you feel a little more pressure going into training. Um, and you're talking so, from experience. Yes. Because this is what you do. Yes. Uh, and I've work to do still at yeah. doing it, but you're um, a physical therapist as well. Is that right? Yes. Physical therapist. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I mean that's my primary incoming, but I race as I call it elite. Um, I race in the pro field, uh, but I don't make a living doing it. I'm not at that level yet. Um, still have some hopes and dreams there, but we'll see what kind of happens over the years. Well, you did well today, and, and do you like this course, and have you raced on this course before? Yeah, I've raced, I've raced here a bunch of times. I mean, we live literally around the corner, um, and I've placed second, third, several times. So it's a little frustrating. I haven't quite put it together here yet, but... Um, you know, it's just kind of sometimes where it falls in my, my training plans and uh, adjusting this year. I mean, I just graduated PT school last August, so I just started working recently. So that's been a bit of an adjustment. Um, you know, we moved, moved in March, uh, and then the engagement and you now all the wedding planning that kind of got, yeah. kind of came up quickly. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's just finding that balance again is, is taking some time. Sure, and it does. And then and what is it that you like about this sport? Because you know, waking up this morning, I'm like, these people are waking up this early to go do this? And I, always, I say that every time we cover an event and we do the Ironman in Puerto Rico, and I don't do the race, I cover the race, but it got to be dedication. Well, I think most of us are thinking the same thing when we wake up in the morning too. Um, the last couple of races this year have been so cold and so early. And you're just like, we pay to, to, to do this. But no, it's fun. Honestly, I think growing up being constantly in some sort of competitive sport, there was just something kind of missing. Sure. Um, not having that. So I think it's a good balance. I'm at a computer screen a lot. I'm behind a camera a lot. So it's just a nice balance, I think. And I do like endurance sports. Yeah. So. Um, well, you're a lifestyle photographer and a wedding yeah. photographer. Yeah. Um, so when you're not doing this, you can work with us and shoot these kind of events. Exactly. That would be kind of fun, right? I know. So Max, when, when you look at this sport and, and you look at the high quality athletes, she has a water polo background. Can you fill us in on your background? It's not uncommon for water polo players to become triathletes. Yeah, um, I come from a swim, originally swimming background. And I started running cross country in high school. Um, and I had that same kind of like what she just talked about. like. I swam through college and then I stopped swimming after my freshman year and I said that void. Um, so I needed something to fill it. I would kind of dabbled with some try stuff in high school and then I just kind of found it and latched on. Um, I've always been that kind of diesel engine kind of guy. Like I just, you know, this shorter stuff is a little weird, or I mean shorter as in two hours, but I like four, five, six, you know, eight hours longer. Um, so you're, you're marrying a crazy man. <laughs> And then, <laughs> yeah, your dad, <laughs> yeah, age group winner in Kona, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and, and my my ultimate favorite part about it is, especially the endurance stuff, is it really rewards hard work. Sure. If you just go out there and put in the time, you will see the results. Um, I mean, yeah, there's people that are genetically more gifted or more talented than others, but at the end of the day, it's like if you don't put in the work, it won't show. You can't ride off of that forever. Absolutely. And th that's my favorite part about it. That's a really good, really good perspective. And before I let you go, I have to ask you this. What advice do you have for other young ladies out there? Maybe if it's even a girl in high school that might want to do this um, or somebody that's kind of on the fence, why would you recommend this sport to them? I think you learn a lot about yourself because a lot of it's not easy. A lot of the training's really hard and sometimes it's kind of boring and it's a lot of time and I think everyone should try it to a certain extent just to see if they like it. Yeah. But um, I do think there is something about having to train through bad days and having to, you know, it's just you, you learn a lot about yourself and how to handle that stuff. So. And I can tell that you guys are going to have a very successful marriage. You're obviously very gifted, you're very dedicated, and I know you're committed to each other. So congratulations on Thank that. You the future Beesman family. So congratulations on a terrific showcase today. And congratulations to your dad, age grouper in Kona. Ah, not too bad. Well, we have much more of Coach's Corner right after this. Well, 
we're going to end the show on a high note, and the whole show has been just tremendous this year, and the event has been tremendous. One reason why is because the event director works his tail off. Last night, 11.30, doing transition work. He's doing bib numbers. He's doing computer work. He does it all. Scott Davis, the event director, along with his beautiful wife, Carrie, who is not on the show. She's out working the event right now. And also joining us is Chris Dell out of Chicago, flying in this week to represent the Parkinson's charity part of this event. So he is the Parkinson's charity athlete. We'll talk to Chris about that. But Scott, what a fabulous event. I mean, it gets, I, I, I say this every year, but it does get bigger and better and more fun every year. How do you keep doing it? Um, I think, I mean, because right away, the first thing we do, We'll leave here, we'll pack up, and this week is all meetings, and we talk to all of our sponsors, and we go around before everybody leaves, and while it's fresh on their mind, we say, name three things that you think we could fix. Name three things that you thought were better than last year. And so, continuing on that mode, and being an athlete myself, is always that we strive, as Ironman, as we know, is the biggest, and they're, they eat underbound gorilla, and if you go to their events, and they have 3,000 volunteers, but I go, you know, it doesn't mean because you're local and in Orange County that you can't strive. I mean, personally, I believe is why they're bigger. I think that we have Not the, bad. The, well. I think we have the prettiest course, you know, in a, in America, in America outside of Hawaii. Along with the fact is, is there's so much Olympic history, which which is this year about, like, you know, bringing in the Olympians, bringing the charity. I mean, the 1984 Olympics was right here on our course, and you know, we're trying to bid for 2024 and looking to bring events back to Orange County. And I think all that hard work, and you look at all these people that support us, it, it just, it, it, the energy has been building and it building, and, and again, we're up in our numbers this year. Yeah. And it's just great to see that. I mean, it's all about the athletes supporting us, but we gotta do our jobs, and that starts with organization and structure tomorrow. Right. Well, you've done a fantastic job and you did a great job of bringing Chris in. I can't imagine the phone conversation that you guys had. Hey, you want to come to California? What do you What do you want me to do? Tell me about how that transpired and why you're here. Well, that was real simple. I love coming out, coming out to California. I don't know how well you know Chicago. It's just like this, except totally different. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as beautiful weather. It's not as beautiful scenery. I've done uh, Olympic distance, uh, half iron distance. I've done full iron distance all over really the planet and this course is spectacular and they really do a great job running this event um, you know and I had a great day today a great course and so Scott asked me specifically to come out to represent the uh, Davis Finney Foundation which the proceeds of this event are, are going to contribute and the, the mission of uh, Davis Finney he was a, a famous cyclist he came down with Parkinson's and uh, I too was like won a gold medal here Connie yeah, Connie Carpenter right. won a gold right. on this course that's right yeah so um, so we decided as a team I signed up with P5 racing a couple of years back and at about the same time I happened to be diagnosed with Parkinson's and uh, so we we chose Davis Finney Foundation as our charity of choice because uh, they help Parkinson's patients find the tools, techniques, and tips to live well today. That's fantastic. So it goes to a great cause. It helps a lot of good people out there, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. Now, correct, correct me, I, I'm not sure if I heard you. Did you say you've raced in this particular event before, or is this your first time No, here? this is my first time here, and I had a great, great time. It actually was the best uh, Olympic distance time, try, time I've had since um, like the last three years. So great time, great venue, well supported. It was good all around. Congratulations. Thank you for awesome. being here. Thank you. Hey, Thanks for having us, Paul. Nice job, man. Thank Appreciate you. that. Again, Cheers. what a great show. The 10th anniversary of the Orange County Triathlon, OC Triathlon, right here in Lake Michigan, at Lake Michigan. Right there in front of us was the, where the Olympics were. Doesn't get any better than this. Until next year, I'm Paul Higgins. Thanks for watching Coach's Corner.